alpha dog and I am excited. Well, you know, I stay excited, but I'm more excited than I usually am excited because I've got two of my very best friends in the industry on the broadcast with me today. And we're expecting a third any minute, starting off with Greg Gifford's evil clone. <laughs> yeah, Greg wanted to take the day off, so uh, he sent me in to uh, handle this for him. <laughs> Fantastic. And, and of course, we're talking Search Lab Digital, the kings of queens of SEO. It's starting out with the founder, the originator. Sons of Suds and Search, <laughs> Mark Beelan. Hey, big guy. Hey, Jim. It's good to be back with you. How are you oh, doing? Oh, man. It's good to have you back. What, what exciting is happening in your in your life and business right now, Mark? Well, we're, you know, just before I got off here, we were closing deals from NADA. So we still got some momentum from that show. And um, we're trying to, you know, trying to navigate everything that's going on in the world of automotive right now, which is a lot. And uh, talking to people like you to try and figure out where things are going and uh, to help our clients as best we can. So it's been a, it's been a great start to the year. We're trying to get, uh, you know, you're try, trying to close out all these NADA stuff and Greg's flying all over the world. Dane's all over the world. Mark's all over the world. Yeah. So we, we got, we got people out there. Um, they'll be coming to a town near you, even if you're in Portugal. So even if you're Portugal, nobody goes to Portugal. <laughs> Tell me about Portugal, Greg. So it's, it's a, a conference for an organization called Cinda. Uh, and they're a really large kind of a nonprofit organization uh, around uh, digital marketing. And they have actually invited me to a conference in Berlin, but I was already doing another conference at that point in time. So they said, let's look at the conference later in the year. And I just talked to him today, and I am going to be one of the opening keynotes at the event in Porto, Portugal in October. Where did you just get back from? I just got back yesterday from Austin, Texas. We were at PubCon, which is pretty much the biggest digital marketing conference. Not vertical specific, but like conference for digital marketers to learn digital marketing. And so I was there speaking. Mark Irvin was there speaking. Dane was there attending. Uh, and then I ended up actually doing more than I was supposed to do because Joy Hawkins, who's the queen of local SEO, uh, actually is fighting a concussion. Like she, well, not fighting a concussion. She got a concussion and, uh, her doctor told her she couldn't fly. And so I was first, supposed to first, be a moderator first, for, that obviously first for her. Yeah. That, so you, you, you filled in for her, right? Yeah. Cause I was moderating that session anyway. And so they said, Hey, you're, you're already going to be in that room. Can you just pick one of your old slide decks to do. So it was kind of fun because that was, so I spoke the session I was supposed to do on Monday and then this one was on Tuesday. And so I basically came in the room and gave them three options of recent presentations that I had done and let the, the room choose which presentation I would do. So it was kind of fun. Let me, let me point out to the audience, the reason we're talking about these things. Now here, this man is a world renowned expert. Uh, his counterpart, the king of PPC, pay-per-click, uh, the paid search expert in the, in the world, in the universe, Mark Irvin, he was also a speaker. Is that true? Yeah. It is still a speaker. Yeah. And, and uh, yeah, it's... This is more, more world-renowned outside and inside of the car business. Yeah. So I want to, I want to point out to you guys... These guys didn't just fall off the truck and get some social media credentials. Yep. No, the, the, this is the real deal. Search Lab has got the power players, and you, pay attention, Mr. Dealer, you have dropped the ball. In, the, in recent months, it has been so easy to sell a car that you dropped your marketing budget. You stop, You took your eye off the ball, and guess what? You disappeared. You are friggin' invisible, and you've got to catch up because your competitors, some of them, stayed in the game the whole time. Mark Beelan, why is SEO in a continuing basis so important? I mean, simply put, it's where people are searching. So it's, it's, when people are in that journey to buy a new car or buy a used car 
or find an oil change place, they're going to go to Google and they're going to search. And so not being on PBC or not, not investing in SEO, it, it just puts you at it's like a ridiculous disadvantage to the competition. And so uh, we, we focus on it because it's practical. At the end of the day, I just want to I want to help people out. This is where your customers are. If you haven't been investing in this sort of thing, it's returned to normal now. You have to work to get these clients, these uh, these cars sold. We're at six months ago. Uh, it's, if you had a car, you were selling. It. I mean, anybody could have sold the car. Now it really is about. Uh, and we were on this show, Jim. You'll remember we were on this show beating this drum and saying this thing's going to end. And if you're if you're taking your eye off the ball, if you're trying to cut costs now. Um, when this thing ends, you're going to be in trouble because our, our clients have been investing. We've been doing the right sorts of things, and they're, they're coming out of this thing uh, in much better position than a lot of their, their competitors. I was talking to my good friend, Brian Benstock, yesterday. As you know, he's, he's the number one certified um, Honda and Acura dealer in the known universe. I mean, he, he is a celebrity in the car business. I mean, a thought leader. And I teach a class at uh, Northwood University. I teach a college class. And he was co co-professor with me yesterday. But afterwards, he and I had a lengthy phone call. And one thing he said to me, and you're going to like this. He said, you know, a termite can't do much by itself, but a whole bunch of termites can take a, a forest down. And the truth of the matter is, Jiffy Lube and all these little termites out there uh, they're 97% of the repair business. Car dealers, franchise dealers are less than three or 4% of the total business. Look how much we, uh, Greg, can we take these termites down? Well, yeah, I mean, that's, that's a, a great example of why dealers need to be doing SEO because at the most basic level, if you want to show up as a search result, when somebody types in a particular search phrase, you need a page of content about that concept on your site. And fixed ops is where nearly every dealership is really missing the boat because they'll have one page that's like schedule your service with us. And it's an I framed in service scheduling form. And that's the only fixed ops content they have on the site at all. And at that's all. why Jiffy Lube and everybody else is beating them because Jiffy Lube's got a page about oil changes in Plano, Texas where that Jiffy Lube is located and for every single service that they provide. And that's where dealerships need to work with a partner that actually understands how SEO works and isn't just following the cookie cutter checklist that they do for every other dealership that they work with. You know, you know, Greg, I have learned personally so much from you. I love doing the broadcast for Search Lab because I learn and I actually implement it in my own business. If, if you're, if you're watching this broadcast, uh, you need to be making notes and you need to be doing things that you hear. I mean, we got one of the foremost experts in the world. People pay a fortune to have him on their stage. And uh, we got Dane Seville coming on in a, in a minute, I, I suppose. He's out there somewhere in the known universe. He's going to come on. We're going to talk to Dane. But, you know, in, in 1922, uh, Bank robber Willie Sutton, I think it was 22. I wasn't around then, no. But anyway, anyway, uh, Willie Sutton, world famous bank robber, they asked him, Why do you rob banks? What, what did he say, Greg? You know, oh, I forgot anybody, what he said. You know, what did he say? I remember it. I remember it's, it being great. I don't remember what it was. Because that's where the money is. Because that's oh, where the yep, money is. Why right. do you rob banks? Because that's where the money is. Yeah. Why do you want to rank high first on Google. Because that's, that's where the where customers it. are. <laughs> Holy shit. You guessed it. Okay. <laughs> Absolutely. That's, and that's, why it, that's why it's such a supremely bad idea that all these dealerships are cutting marketing spend because of the recession. Because yeah. it's only going to get worse before it gets better. And if it's a recession, that means there are fewer people buying cars which means you're going to have to fight that much harder to sell your car. So if you're thinking, oh, well, our profit per copy is going down, guess what? It's going to go down even more if you're not selling the cars that you've got on your lot. And if you stop doing SEO, it's like Mark said earlier during the whole COVID thing, everybody that did SEO was now way ahead of everybody that didn't. Same sort of thing's going to work during recession. If you stop SEO now, 
You're going to have to fight even harder to get visibility. And your competitors that continue to do SEO during the recession are going to kick your butt all day long. And you're going to lose business even once the recession is over. Look at our previous broadcast, folks. We we've been we've been beating this drum. We 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 were the Paul Paul Revere of the car business, riding through the streets of the cyber world, screaming the warning, and you didn't listen. Yeah. Now it's on us. Uh, this week, American Car Centers, one of the biggest players in the subprime industry, fifty dealerships in Georgia alone, went under. If somebody on the news tells you that there is no recession because somebody in Washington told them that, guess what? <laughs> it's here. And you need to be the best player in the market. Why? Why, Mark Bill? why? Well, it's, it, you're exactly right. I mean, I, I feel I feel terrible about these stories. Um, these are like if people who work there are, are going to be out of work and stuff like that. The Hundreds, thousands. I don't know. That's that's a lot of that's a lot of jobs. I mean, 50, 50 dealerships in Georgia alone um, is. Well, I mean, then the post says there were two hundred and eighty eight employees at the corporate headquarters that found out through email they had until five p.m. that day to get out. It's, I mean, <laughs> so uh, you know, basically, what I, what I would tell you is, that we can talk about SEO, we can talk about local SEO, GBP, all that stuff, but at a certain point, this becomes about being a business guy. And if, if, if business guy, business gal, and if you're if you're taking your eye off the ball right now, it's an important time to make very good decisions and uh, and, and to navigate this very carefully, making sh cutting investments in sales and marketing right now during a recession, when every deal is is important and every single thing is, uh, you know, you're, you're going to be you're going to be in fist fights every day to try and get these deals. If if you're not going to, you know, if you're not gonna, if you're going to cut make cuts there. I, I worry because that's where the customers are. That's what it's a shrinking pond, and we're going to have to fight for every single deal. You know, you know, uh, Greg and Mark, I have said for for 30, 40 years, you can grow or you can die, but you cannot stay where you are. That's it. <laughs> you grow or die. I mean, take take your choice. You know, I always aggressively attack the market, mm -hmm. and I, and I became a national figure in the car business because I had that track record. Dealers, general managers listening to this show, decision makers, you've got some hard decisions to make right now. And I say aggressively attack the market. Uh, pinpoint your advertising. Look at your fixed operations. That's going to be a lot more important than it's been in the past because people are keeping their cars longer. Cars are more expensive. Uh, people are you look at an EV, I mean, the cost of owning an, an EV and, and keeping it, people are, are staying with their, their gasoline operated automobiles. What do you think, Greg? Did you see Tesla's announcement about $30 unlimited charging? Excuse me? So Tesla, they're starting this, this new program in Texas. They just announced it. If you use Tesla energy, like Tesla's as an electric provider for your home, you can pay $30 a month to charge your vehicle unlimited times at night. So basically you can plug your car in every night and whatever additional power you draw by having your car plugged in doesn't count against your electric bill if you're doing the $30 unlimited charge. And they've got the technology to know that was your car charging. Exactly. Because if Tesla is the power provider, they can tell that you know your car is plugged into the network because of all of the Tesla stuff tied in with whatever Tesla's doing in your electric bill, which that, you know, for a lot of people that don't drive an EV and don't realize, okay, great. Like I, $30 a month would be more than what I pay monthly to charge my car at home at night. So it wouldn't matter for me, but for those people that don't drive EVs now that are worried about range limitations and what it's going to cost compared to gas. If you're in Texas and you're like, geez, I can switch over to that and only have to pay $30 a month. And that's it. And that fuels my car for forever. That's a barrier to entry that's now gone for a whole lot of people, which means more people are going to be getting EVs and they're going to stay in them for a long period of time. So, yeah, I mean, it's a, you know, for those of you that aren't doing SEO, it's a great time to start doing it or paid search, start doing it because a lot of your competition is stopping it because they're worried about the recession. 
And this is a great time that if everyone else's signals drop and your signals go up, you should be able to get some pretty awesome results. And then you'll be ahead of the game when everybody else jumps back into digital marketing, whenever the recession is over. Hey, hey, hey Mark, let me ask you a question. Tell me, tell me a success story that, that, that comes to mind right now for Search Lab. Tell me, tell me a, a success story where a dealer or somebody at a dealership related to you, some success story that you've had recently. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm always I'm a big fan of winning awards, as, as, as I can see you are as well. So we just got back from NADA where we won an award at the AWA Awards for our local search. And then Greg was honored as an individual as well. I got a ton of glass trophies. <laughs> <laughs> and so, and so we, we love to win awards. But the reason we win the awards is, is usually because of a campaign behind it. So we'll talk a lot about uh, a Kia dealership that we we champion this this account a lot, a key dealership in Mont in uh, Minnesota, excuse me, uh, that has had explosive growth. And what, what's been really interesting is I started talking to you about this key dealership a year or two ago. I and, recall, yes, I do. And I, I the reason tell, I bring tell it, the viewers, tell the viewers, the reason I bring it. So we won the, the word over my head. We won the best local SEO campaign of the 2021 U.S. Search Awards, which is not just for automotive; that's for all of search. And so. Uh, it, it's a, the only award that we apply for, and it's the most prestigious award for, in our industry. The reason I bring that one up is because instead of that being something where we saw explosive growth and then it plateaued or leveled off, we've continued to work with that dealership. We've continued to see great results. We put, you know, if you come to our booth at any deal or digital dealer, we'll show you uh, campaign results that we have because we're, we're like, I believe I'm just being as transparent as you possibly can be. So we're going to show you actually the screenshots from reports that we send to our clients that will show 100 plus percent growth. In this case, is like now gotten over a thousand percent organic growth uh, and climbing. Greg, you maybe even have more wait, updated wait, information wait, on that one. Wait, than I have. wait, 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 time out, time out. Well, a thousand percent growth. I mean, yeah, I'm pulling stuff up right it, now. I can, I can this, give you wait, exactly. Wait, is, this, is, this, is this provable? Yes, oh, yeah, provable. totally. And so it, it, like, I can't, I can't, uh, make you an got a screenshot for me, Greg. I do. Ooh, let, let me, let me share my screen with you. Or, or you share your screen with me. Well, let me share screen here. Okay. It's at the bottom, a little, little arrow pointing up. Oh, uh, little picture there? of a television screen right next to your camera. Yeah, I know. I'm trying to figure out. I've got so many windows open. I'm now trying to figure it out. Uh, is it the, what is the? Hold on, I got to find the right one to share. Okay, yeah, don't 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 send me any of those pictures. <laughs> <laughs> that one there, right? That's sharing. That shows the organic traffic page where things are down a little bit because obviously we're in a recession. But you can see there the bottom of that. Uh, let me zoom there a bit. This, this part the line at the bottom, right? So you can see in this, that's a little bit too big of a zoom. Uh, you can see in this, that light blue line at the bottom. When this dealer came to us in uh, the beginning of 2020, they were averaging 4,400 visits a month. So through COVID, it's gone up and up and up and up. That now they're at 55,000 in January of this year. And last year, they averaged 70,000. 70,000 what? Organic visits to the website every month. Organic. I mean, like, look at that. May of 2022, they had 87,445 organic visits to the website. That's organic. That's from Google, Yahoo, Bing, everything. That's not total traffic. That's just organic search traffic. And then we've got all kinds of other crazy stuff, too. Like, I'm looking over here through our Slack channel where we talk about big wins. We've got a Stellantis dealer that started with us in July of last year. And they were averaging 1,700 visits a month. And in January, they were over 6,000. Wow. So five times the traffic of what they were getting eight months ago. Uh, we've got another one here. Uh, another dealership, a Honda dealership that's been with us for a little over a year. They were averaging 3,100 visits a month. They're uh, actually, they're like a year and a half, sorry. Uh, but they were 3,100 visits on average monthly organically before they started working with us. And in January, they were at 25,700. 
So it's like big, big, big jumps that, you know, you don't have to stick around for years and years of time to get this. So, you know, here's another one here. That's uh, this one's been with us for just under a year. They were averaging 9,800 visits a month before they started with us. And they were at 55,000 last month. <laughs> so five times again. Now, does that okay, happen every wait, time? Wait, 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 no. yeah, uh, slow down. Slow down. Okay. We went from 5,500. Uh, 9,800 visits a month on average before working with Search Lab. And after working with Search Lab, they went up to... Last month was 55,000. Well, January was 55,474. 9,800 to 55,000 views of the website. Now, what does that translate into? In, uh, let, let's talk about sales and click-throughs and... Uh, Let's let's talk about uh, how many of these people converted. What what happened with that? Do you know? Well, let me pull that up because that's just a screen capture of a thing. I'd have to pull up that guy's specific report to see how much his leads went up as well. So give me just a second. Yeah, yeah, I'd like to, I'd like to know because we're talking about SEO. Me, me, and we're we're reaching meaningful people, right? And I already know the answer. I know Search Lab, and I know yeah. you know. I can I can load you up with, with with junk views. I mean, you know that little guy from India, love him like we do. He's not gonna buy a car from you. Yeah, <laughs> no, I, I love it. I mean, these things come through to Greg's point. Like all all week, we're getting different uh, reports. We're really, during reporting time. We'll get our consultants will send out reports. They're, they're he just pulled those right out of our Slack channel. Wasn't like we had that prepared or anything like that. Yep. Okay. So this one that we were just talking about, it's a Honda dealer. They started with us uh, towards the end of 2021. So they've been with us for like a year and a half. Uh, they, you know, same thing we were just talking about that they were starting at below 10,000 a month on average. They were at 5,500 last month. So when they first 55,000, 55, yeah. So when yeah. they first started working with us, just looking at organic conversions, like how many leads did they get? So that's between phone calls, form fills, emails, chats. Any inbound lead that came that was definitely attributed to organic visitors. True conversion uh, uh, attributed to organic visitors to the site. Okay, right. 364 yeah. a month when they were starting with us. And last month. Their number was 1,010. So say more than... Again. Say that triple. again. Say both numbers again. Okay. Original, 364. Last month, 1,010. And that's just organic leads. So, so in other words, SEO works so that we actually... How's, how's their sales improved? Do we have any... any inkling of, of what they uh are. this dealership we don't get sales data from okay you don't get the sales some dealerships data. It, it you know it's it's right. a mixed bag whether a dealership is willing to share sales data with their digital marketing providers uh some do some don't we always ask because obviously you know the the big disconnect for most dealerships is what kind of roi am i getting from digital marketing whether it's seo or ppc and you're gonna have all these seo vendors that say Hey, look, you're getting more organic traffic. Your SEO is winning. And the dealership says, I'm not selling any more cars or booking any more service visits. SEO is not working. So the only thing SEO That's guys- where do I was headed with that. That's exactly where I'm headed. Yeah. And and the, the marketing agency is always going to say, it's working, it's working. And the dealership's going to say, it's not, it's not. Everyone, and I actually was talking it about this just in general at the SEO <laughs> conference in Austin just the other day, that everybody's really good at connecting SEO efforts to increase traffic and then increase traffic to increase leads. But most people stop there. The really good SEO agencies are the ones that work with their, their clients to say, give me your sales information. You know, how often does your digital marketing partner ask you, Hey, how, how are your leads? Not just like, Hey, Jim, your leads are up. We're winning. It's like, Hey, according to our data, leads are way up. According to your data, leads are way up. But how's the quality of the leads? Because who cares? That's what I was asking you earlier. Lead, and they, they all suck and they're not going to be actually qualified leads. So you need to take the extra step as a responsible partner to ask the dealership, how's the quality of the leads? And then what do sales look like? And some dealerships will sell or share that sales information and some won't. 
So, you know, we do have dealerships that do share sales information. And like Mark mentioned, the Kia dealership, every month during COVID, yeah. other than maybe two months, he was setting like all time sales records for that dealership. And he's the number one Kia dealer in his state. So like something's working. Well, you know, I've been I've been with you guys and you guys have been with me since COVID. And we we have seen the success stories piling up uh, search lab digital. Now that's searchlabdigital.com. Com? You got it. Yep. Searchlabdigital.com. Now, whatever you're doing right now, don't don't kid yourself. Is it working? Is your inve- is your investment yielding a return? Talk to me about that, Mark. Yeah, I mean, that's that's what I liked about this from the very beginning. So I've been in digital marketing since 2007. Um, I used to think you know, the first time I saw the data, that's what kind of got me hooked. I always wonder, like, if you're selling billboards, you know, billboard sales, how do you prove whether that works or not? There's got to be a way, but I don't really know. Um, with us, we, we try to be, you know, extremely transparent with a client about the data that we have. Uh, the, the extent to which our data is interest, like informative and transparent, but not, we try not to be information overload. Uh, I think put, sets us apart. And we really, like, like Greg said, we want to be a partner with you because you want to work with us. So it's even how we set up our contracts. Like if you don't like this return on investment that you're getting and we try and set expectations, it's going to take some time and all that stuff. You're like, it's a 30 day out. We don't have any long-term contracts with you. Oh, because- back up, back up a second. A 30 day out. It's 30 days you're out of a contract with me because I, I, I like I want to be a partner of yours. If it's not a good partnership, I don't want to take your money. I mean, if it's you don't, not even you know, really a contract. It's literally just an agreement that says, hey, look, you have to give us 30 days notice that you want to end this relationship. But from day one, you can cancel at any time. You just got to give us 30 days notice. There's, so there's not really even any sort of length of time associated with the contract. And I just think that's, that's good business. And so what we try and do is say we have to earn your business every single month by providing transparent data that will show the return on investment. And if we don't, if we don't do that, my contract stipulates you can get out anytime you want. So I'm, I'm trying to put my money where my mouth is and say, hey, this is a 30 day out contract. Every single month we have to earn your business with what we're doing, with the service we provide, with the sort of like uh, results we, we get and with the, the ROI you're getting from our service. And so it's it's been our mindset every single, uh, since ever since, even before I was with Greg, where I was like, I want you to work with us because you want to, not because you have to. You're locked into a six month or a year long contract. And a lot of my competition wants to, I mean, they'll lock you into a year, 18 month long contract. And well, like the service like goes away. Um, and, and so we, we, we never wanted to be that kind of a partner for our clients. And it served us well. Absolutely. How do you do business with Search Lab? How do you? How do you how do you hook up with you guys? What's step number one, two, three, four, five, fifty? What what do you do? If you go to our website and schedule a demo request, or you can reach out to Greg or myself, we're really good at you know, any email I get from this show, I answer immediately, and Greg's the same way. Um, you can text us on the website. Yeah, you can text us from the website. If you go on the website, use that you, text message. Can you actually text you personally from the website? No, not me personally, but our our. Sales oh, but we get it. We all have access to that dashboard. So if you want to send a text message and you're watching this either live or as a recording and you say, hey, I want to talk to Greg and Mark as part of that message you send in, well, then obviously we're going to come back and answer yeah, you. Yeah. It's but it's, yeah, it's, like it goes to the whole leadership team and sales team if you text us through the site. Yeah. Fantastic. So, so once we receive that, we'll set, set up a, a sales demonstration where you know, we want to know whether you want SEO and PPC, just PPC, just SEO, and then we'll have a product expert on the call to go through that with you. Usually, if it's SEO, um, we're going to want to score your site. So I don't want to, I, I, I really feel like I should defer to Greg on the scoring matrix to let him introduce that. But we're going to want to have some material for you that's free of charge so that we can uh, we can tell you where you're at and, and how your how your performance is in SEO. Greg's this score matrix like just took took the auto industry by storm. We've gotten a zillion of these now. I have heard that, and uh, and so it's it's a really nice feature, and and so the demonstration isn't just us 
pitching you or also just we're explaining it, it, it what i really like about it is it's an opportunity for you to see what it's like to work with us we're going to actually show you it's a tactical thing it's a uh, they'll put a bunch of caveats there, but you can see the level of rigor that, that Greg has put into this SEO program for us. We've scored anyway. 710 dealerships since the beginning of January of last year. <laughs> wow, that is incredible. Yeah. yeah it's, it's too bad that uh, Dane didn't show up today. He I said he's just about to jump on. I just slapped him a second ago. I know. He's in the back. He's in the back of the. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you're doing there. There he is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Dan Seville. How are you? I'm doing well, Jim. How are you doing? Pretty good. He's a little late today. He had a tag team match, but he's here with us now. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah, he just back from a cage match. Oh, golly. Uh, one question I want to ask this distinguished panel now that you're all here. We, we've been bragging about organic search, but you know, there's another another part of your business. Uh, tell me about that. Yeah, so we, we do two things. We do SEO, local SEO, and we do uh, PBC. So we'll run paid ads primarily on Google. I mean, we, we have a reputation for search. This is my search lab. So we, we have a lot of, uh, most of our ads are run through Google and Bing, uh, but we can run ads on paid social for you. We can, we're getting more and more interest in our paid social offerings. Um, and our leader in that is, is Mark Irvin. So you mentioned him earlier in the show. He's, you know, as big a name in PPC as, as, uh, as anyone on planet earth and his methodology has been amazing. So we, we go to market with uh, really customized solutions for our regular clients. What we found, um, you know, a lot of our competition is sort of like, if you're a four dealer, you press the button for four dealer and that's how the campaign gets built out. Mark has taken a different approach, and I've, I've really enjoyed that, which is like his, it's, he wants to have human beings, a customized approach for your dealership that services your specific needs. And so you might have a totally different uh, Ford dealer than, than that Ford dealer that, that just gets a button. So we want to make sure we're listening to you, we're engaging uh, and being consultative with you the whole way through and building a campaign that's going to that's gonna perform well for what you need, because, you know, I'm not trying to sell you a bunch of cars that you don't have in stock or that, that won't work or if fixed ops is a more of a priority, let's invest more money there. Uh, but but I, I think our campaigns have been, we, we won another award, um, just like we won the one for local SEO, we won a PBC award in 2021 at the US Search Awards as well. Fantastic. Hey, Dana, well, welcome to the broadcast. Um, let, let me ask you, I ask everybody else, tell me a success story. Oh, well, you know, I, I guess, you know, it's just, we just have so many, look at that. You put me on the spot there, Jim, and I just, yeah, well, oh, hey, I got from one conversation to another, man, loaded, loaded questions. Tell me a success a story. Trademark. And I gotta go, I gotta go, oh man, like, who do okay. I, who do I, who do I pick? Well, okay. All right, we got, we, I'm not, how about, I'm gonna take that question back. I'm gonna take nope, that I got, back. I got it for you, Jim. We got a great dealer group. Uh, and uh, we, we have a great contact there, and there's a really good collaboration. And, uh, I mean, they provide us. We have a shared Google Drive. They give us pictures for GBV posts and different assets, and they're really highly engaged. And that's the best kind of partner to have as an engaged partner. And I'll tell you what, man, we're starting. We're really starting to see the lift from the efforts. So, you know, I, I, don't, I don't have specific numbers off the top of my head, but I can tell you the traffic – the conversions, everything's looking nice. That's and healthy, all we want to hear. Right? I mean, I mean, it's it's yeah. and it, it and it comes from it comes from the reason we're seeing such a nice lift right now is because it comes from that collaboration, right? No, you know, you're not an island unto yourself, and and you know it, it, that's why we that's why we call our folks partners. I tell everyone on my team, you don't call them a client, you call them a partner. They're a partner, and you know when you when you have someone who is intimately involved, wants to know, is enthusiastic about what's going on. What is the strategy? What are the tactics? That holds us better to account, right? That that makes us really, you know, be introspective and, and say, okay, yeah, let's let's talk about this more. And those conversations have led to, I mean, just a really great, a really good, healthy relationship that we have now. And like I said, we're, we're, we're seeing we're seeing in the traffic and the conversions in the in the right pages, traffic being driven to, uh, you know, we're really cohesive and, and dialed in on, on, on their goals. And, and we're seeing that firing in when we look at the Google Search Console and the, analytic, and the analytics. Fantastic. Uh, 
back, back to PPC, mm-hmm. you know, how, what kind of accounting do you give a dealer on that? I'm going to go back to Mark Bielen for a second. Mark, what kind of accounting do you guys give the dealers? Because uh, the reason I'm asking this is I know there, I know some agencies that I really distrust because the, their billing is is so ethereal. It's like, whoosh, you know, you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know these ones too. We might be talking about the same ones. So yeah. I couldn't believe it. You know, I, I've been in automotive now for three or four years. Uh, so I've been at it for a little while, but I, I will never forget the feeling of coming into automotive from just kind of being a, a general digital marketer and realizing that a lot of car dealers don't have access to their Google ads account. So that when you work with some of these, some of these agencies, I, I didn't realize that you had to ask to like get access to your own Google ads. And so what we have done is said like, we thrive in transparency. You're going to control your ad account. If at some point in the future, I hope it's a very long time off, you want to uh, choose a different vendor, it's going to be the easiest transition ever because you control the account. Um, we will give you anything you want to know about your ads account, like how much you spent, how much you spent in a week, how much you spent in a month, how much you spent in a quarter, down to the penny. We'll give you that information. Story I quickly. hope the dealers realize how how unusual that is and, and how beneficial that is. That That is incredible because... You're not getting that from many, many vendors in the industry. And it, 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 it disappoints me that that's like that's a, a unique uh, differentiator for us, but it is. I mean, we, the amount of times like we we are on. Uh, uh, Dane just came from a sales presentation. Like if, if we're on demos all the time, and we're going. Well, let me take a look at your Google Ads account before we get on this call, so I can give you an informed sales presentation. <laughs> and it's like the first time anybody's ever asked it. They, they, they don't have access. Le- legitimately. <laughs> Legitimately, earlier today, talking to a dealer, and they were working with someone, and they were it's doing their PPC, yeah. and they have their own like proprietary reporting, but they were told like, hey, you're, you're like they said they they the an agency said they were using the dealer's ads account, right? They were using the dealer has their own ads account, but it turns out they were using their own account. It turns out they weren't using the dealer's ads account. They, they were, were using reporting. their own agency. They were account. using their own agency account, and then through their proprietary reporting, we're claiming that they and the dealer only found out because now they're leaving them. And 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 finally, kind of like right, took a look themselves and went, "What in the world is going on?" And that's whenever they discovered, "Oh, it wasn't their account after all." And and what? just because what? someone shows you reporting that shows your money is being spent the way it's supposedly being spent, doesn't mean it actually is. And if you don't have access to your ad account, you can't see that. You so it's entirely account. possible if you're a dealer and you're saying, "Hey, I'm dropping 10k a month on PPC ads." Maybe only 8K got spent, but that company's still going to take your 10K the next month. Now, because yes. m- if they're running through their ad account, it's probably running on their credit card as well. When it's running on your own ad account, you see Google charging you and you can see the ad account to see what's being spent. If it's their ad account, their credit card, they can just bill you every month by invoice. And whether that gets m- that gets spent or not, nobody really knows. Okay, okay. Well, that spent. was where I was headed with this, Greg. Honest to goodness, and I think we all know who I'm talking about. There is a, a major agency in the industry, uh, no names, but still in all, they they will bill a dealer. They will say, "Hey, you got a twenty thousand dollar budget, a big deal. We got twenty thousand dollar SEO budget, a pay per click budget." But they got guess what? They don't spend the whole twenty thousand, and you've got no record of that. Uh, Mark Bielen, what do you think? Yeah, the, the phrase is trust but verify. But if you don't have any way to verify, how how can you do that? Um, it's a it, it, this is just a hundred percent a trust game. Like I don't think that's a good way to do business. It's a shell say, game. It's a shell game, and I I don't know how. Um, you know, if there's any message I want to get out to to clients, this is the whole mindset I have as a as a business owner is I want you to work with me because you want to work with me. I'm going to tell you the good, the bad, the ugly. If, if we have a we have an off off month and the performance isn't good, we're going to stand there and be held accountable for it. But when, when we do well, we're going to be rewarded for that too, because the trust has been, has, has been earned because we will, we will show you everything warts and all, you know, we're not perfect. We, we, we don't do everything right, but we will be transparent to a fault. And it's not always going to be great news, especially coming into a recession. Chances are your traffic's going to probably be going down and your leads might be going down a little bit. But that doesn't mean that SEO is not working. That doesn't mean that PPC is not working. It could just be a drop in demand. And it doesn't mean it doesn't mean we, you should 
create some sort of shell game where you uh, you spin and you obfuscate and you make it seem like it is otherwise. At this time, at this at this day and age, I think one of the things I try and do when I run my business is just say like, you know, hey, we're, we're going to be fair to everybody, uh, to everybody who's our client. We want to be transparent to a fault and you can trust but verify everything that we do. Uh, Adam Gallegos on the sidebar just said, great information on this panel, but isn't SEO dead? Oh, Greg, you're out of work. Greg, you're obsolete. You're obsolete, Greg. SEO's never going to die. Uh, there will always be a need for SEO. I, at one of the keynotes at the conference that Dane and I just got back from, was from Fabrice Canel at Bing, and Bing's kind of jumped ahead of Google in offering a AI chat-powered search experience. It's now in beta. And even he said, this isn't going to do anything for SEO because the information still has to exist on your website, and it still has to be optimized the right way. Just because the search experience might change a little bit doesn't mean that it's going to be based off different underlying information. And I think I, I I think Adam was kind of joking, and that might have been a little tongue in cheek. But yeah, do you know Adam by anywhere. any chance? I know do what? Yeah. Do you know Adam? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hi Adam. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't I didn't put his other comment up there. It says uh, Greg doesn't know what he's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I left that one off. No, yeah, exactly. On this broadcast today, Dane, Dane Seville, what is your title with the company? What do you do? Director of SEO. Director of SEO. What have we not told people in this broadcast that we really need to get out there? Oh, Jim, that's a great question because I missed half the broadcast. So I don't even know what you're covering. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we, we were talking about you. Yeah. <laughs> now, you know, there's just, you know, there's there's a there's a lot of there's a lot of synergy. There's a lot of synergy between your assets for SEO between your GBP and your website. There's a lot of synergy between your SEO and PPC. At least there should be. So, you know, making sure that that the the strategy, the work being done on your behalf is 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 making is set up to make the greatest impact possible to fire on your business goals. So, you know, making sure that um, you're having good conversations to understand not just the what is happening, but why is it happening, right? Making sure you're having good conversations about the why. Because a lot of folks can out there and just go, look at these pretty new things. Look at this new blog. Look at this new this. Look at this change here. And I can give you a whole spreadsheet of things I can do. But why did I do them? Were they really valuable? So make sure that as you are talking to your SEO partner, your PPC partner, that they are equipped to tell you why they're doing what they're doing and not just, hey, Here's a whole bunch of stuff that I just did, right? We don't want stuff. We want strategy. Right. Okay. S stuff, strategy. Um, Greg, what have we not told people we need to tell them? I think it's important to make sure you're working with a vendor partner th that does things specifically for your store. So many of the providers, especially the ones that are in the OEM approved little groupings, it's checklist SEO. They're doing exactly the same cookie cutter BS that they do for every other dealership across the country. And every dealership is unique. Every brand is obviously different, but every location is unique. And every dealership has different Google business. Google doesn't companies. mind if you have the same content on every competitor's website. I mean, your customer, I mean, again, one of the things I just said at this conference this week, even though it wasn't for car dealers, was saying that, look, if you want to show up in search results, it's not just about doing the SEO technical stuff to optimize your content, to make sure your content stands out. It's making sure that your content is memorable and that your content is a great, or your site is a great user experience because the more expensive your product or service is, the more people are going to do research. And we know with cars, it's the second most expensive purchase in your lifetime other than your house for the vast majority of people. They do a lot of research. The most recent Data from Google says that people visit uh, or do 27 separate sessions of research before they submit a lead. So it's not just the Google side of is duplicate content good for you. It's think about the customer conversion side of if you're a Ford dealer in Dallas and there's 20 Ford stores in that market and every dealership has the same 
boilerplate Ford content, but your dealership has badass, awesome content that's just different and actually tells people why you're a great solution and why people should buy from you and not from everybody else. Regardless of the SEO side of things, you're going to stand out and be memorable and you're more likely to capture that business down the road because you're just different from your competitors. I have learned so much just on these broadcasts from you, uh, actually from Mark. It's amazing. I'm, I'm setting up my, my Wikipedia page right now. <laughs> nice. I'm getting my own Wikipedia and I've been researching myself. And so many of the things that you taught me have actually worked and I didn't even realize they were working, you know, you, you know, until I started trying to verify things for Wikipedia. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and by, by the way, how good is, is Wikipedia with the SEO? I mean, if you can get a Wikipedia page up, then that's kind of cool. But as a car dealership, there's no real reason to have a Wikipedia no, page no, about no, your car dealership. No, so. no, okay. Forget it. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, Mark Bielen, as the big cheese on the broadcast, what have we not told people? I, I think the, the thing that's come to mind for me is having been on this show now for a while, I, I do think I do think we were pressing about some things when we, we talked at the beginning that we, we made some predictions um, about, you know, if you, if you pause your marketing during uh, during these good times, you're going to come out of it in a, in, a, in a bad way, like I said. I think this is going to be a year where it's it's going to be fighting black belts. So if you're really good at, at SEO, you're going to have to you're going to have to compete and outperform other people who are good at SEO. And if you're not doing SEO at all, or if you're doing bad SEO, it's good. It's going to be survival mode. You know, it's going to be tough because it's it's that hard of a, a market right now. And that's that's just talking about the marketplace. Throw in there a bunch of things in our industry that are going to change a lot this year. GA4 is something that I talk about. Like I, I haven't been on a podcast like this where somebody hasn't brought up GA4 by this time of the show. It's the hot topic. So your data is going to ChatGPT. ChatGPT is this new innovation where people are finding all sorts of use cases for it. Uh, we're I, I think the three of us are all enamored with it to different degrees and in ways that we want to use it. Um, the industry itself, the SEO industry, is going to be a lot different this time next year than it is today. At the same time you're in a, a dog fight with everybody for every single car sale. I mean, every single one is going to be a fight. And so I would say to all our dealerships, you know, take it very seriously. I think we've been, I think we've, we've come here when I, if I'm wrong, I'll tell you I'm wrong, but we have been right more of the times than not. Oh, oh, oh absolutely. On these broadcasts. You know, it's, you know, it's, it's really yeah, another subject we haven't uh, touched on is the credit challenge right now. Asperian says that delinquencies, late payments, and repossessions are at record highs since the early 70s. I mean, we are we are we are struggling. And I'm I'm I call it a sea of heartbreak because I it's gonna we've been selling cars for ten, twenty thousand dollars over sticker. We've been slapping ourselves on the back like we did something, and now we have totally killed the market. I mean Dealers are going to have to find ways to, to train your people, do more leasing, be prepared for the people. And you're going to have to sift through more people to find qualified buyers. What do, you, what do you think, Greg? Oh, yeah. I mean, like, think about that guy that just bought a Ford Bronco at 25K over sticker a year ago. And now he's lost his job because he got laid off and he can't afford to payment. So he wants to unload the car and switch to something else. He's way upside down he paid twenty five thousand over sticker i can go in atlanta right now to a ford dealer and get one for a thousand under invoice yeah so how, what's going to happen if that guy wants to use that car as a trade-in you're already going to be upside down because you're trying to trade in a car you just bought a year ago but now you're even more because you paid 25k over sticker forty thousand under truck. forty thousand dollars upside down some of the people we put on the street in Chevrolet's, Fords, and, and Chrysler yeah. vehicles. And those people, you know what? The dealerships didn't care at the time, but guess what? All those customers are screwed right now. And those customers are going to be even more pissed if they come back to your dealership. I and never realize back. the reason they're so underwater yeah. is because of the fact that you tacked on an extra 25K in, in fees because you could. And there's no way out of it. I mean, it, so everybody says, well, that's subprime. It's not going to be your subprime people. 
It's going to be your middle income people, even your wealthy people. It's going to be a whole different segment having credit problems more and bankruptcies are going to abound. I mean, as we get a deeper into a recession, which we are in a recession, it's going to get there. What do you, what do you think, Dane? Yeah. You know, I mean, it, economics are hard to predict and, you know, right now we're dealing with super high interest rates and, you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's affecting everyone, you know, and uh, there's no telling what the future will hold. Uh, things uh, don't seem to be uh, in the short term going to be changing much. And so I think that's why, you know, when we when we talk about these experiences from first engagement, when a consumer starts conducting a search to post purchase or post, uh, you know, repair order, you, you got to deliver. You need to deliver on the intent. You need to be first. You need to be found. So you need to have your PPC and your SEO firing. Secondly, you need to have things optimized on your site to encourage conversions Third, when you get those conversions and you get those leads, you got to have a good process. You got it's end to end, right? It's end to end. That's dealers really need to be dialed in on a good experience from start to finish. So, what services do you offer um, on the local search, um, Greg? What, what services oh, I mean, we, do you guys offer? I mean, it's, uh, the the SEO that we do, we do a lot more than anybody else because we're optimizing stuff that already exists on your site where most people are just adding new content and that's it. So we're optimizing content that's already there. We're adding 4,000 words of content a month. Typically that's going to be four pieces of content. We're doing local link building, which nobody else is doing. We're doing uh, citations, which aren't really as important as they used to be, but still important to get right. We fully manage and optimize the Google business profile for the dealership. Uh, and we okay, that, ooh, I want to hear, I want to hear about that. You fully optimize and you build the Google profile for uh, formerly uh, Google My Business, right? Yes. Yep. Oh, <laughs> that that how important is that? I mean, it's hugely important. It's it's everybody's first impression with your dealership if they search for you by name and optimizing it properly enhances your chances of showing up in that map pack or in Google Maps, which is another big point of discovery that most other providers aren't talking about. I mean, you're going to see, you know, the the insights section, which is kind of like performance data around your Google business profile. They've actually just changed the way it works. It used to be a couple of different things like discovery impressions and branded impressions. That's gone away. And now it's showing you impressions in search versus impressions in maps. So they're really driving home that, hey, look, people, you're getting a lot of visibility in Google Maps and in the map pack that is different from showing up as a standard search result. Okay, what about the map pack? Is it, is so that the map pack, that's whenever you do a search query and you get the the three results with on desktop, the map will be over to the right. On, on mobile, the map will be on top. But that's when you get those three results clustered with a map. And uh, that it's very, very reliant on your Google business profile. Yeah. Okay, so that how do, that's how you get in that club? Uh, yeah, I mean, without a properly optimized Google business profile, you're not going to show up in the map pack at all. You're not going to be in the club. No, Unless no, no, you're no. the only Ford guy in town and somebody's looking for a Ford dealer. Okay, well, then you're going to show up because there's just no options. But if you have any competition at all, or when you go for the more generic stuff like used cars or oil change or whatever, if you're not optimized on the Google business profile side of things, you're not going to show up in that map pack. Hey, hey, Mr. Dealer, Mrs. Dealer, Mrs. Dealer, Mr. Dealer, Mr. Mrs. GM watching this broadcast, uh, you, you, you're you sitting there and you're, you're smug. Well, I, I'm okay. I've got a company doing a good job. You, you, you're really pr proud of, of what you're doing. Search Lab, Mark Bielan, will you guys take a look at what they're doing? We'll do it for free. We do it all the time. So, um, yeah, these, these, the team I've, I've surrounded myself with, they're, they're like the best educators in the whole industry. I mean, Dane, Dane speaks all over. Greg's international. Uh, Mark's international all over the place. And you have nothing to lose. So you, you could you could come show show us your uh, your PBC, uh, have us score your site, take the information. If it's if uh, if we're not the right fit for you, it's uh, I'm not going to pressure sell you at well, all. I want, I want an alpha dog special. I want something that, that you're not doing for everybody. Uh, Greg. Uh, overriding him a second here. Don't <laughs> uh, I was trying to get Mark to say this. I was slacking him, but I don't think he saw it on Slack. Uh, 
I'm gonna pull some strings. I haven't okayed this with Mark, but I'm sure Mark's gonna be okay with it. Okay, I, I, I can, I can, I can. Hey, hey, wait a second. the corner now. I can take him off screen. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no, leave him on screen. So you'll see his reaction if he goes, "Oh crap!" Uh, no, so uh, I'm gonna I pull some strings and, and give us an Alpha Dog exclusive special. Yeah, Alpha so if Dog. You're watching exclusive. this, Mister or Mrs. Dealer, either live right now or as a recording later. All you have to do is mention when you're doing your sales demo or before the demo when you contact us that you saw us and reached out to us because you saw us on the Jim Ziegler broadcast, on the Alpha Dog broadcast. We'll knock 300 bucks a month off your price for forever. No, no, no. 300 bucks? Yep. That's coming out of Mark Beelan's pocket? <laughs> <laughs> he didn't yeah. freak out too bad, so I guess we're okay. I yeah. love it. I love it. Okay. It's just The Alpha Dog special. Okay. Okay, okay, some on your desk. Give me a drum roll. Oh, there's the thing. It disappeared. <laughs> there it is. Okay, I had the drum oh, wait, roll. Here we go. You want a drum roll? Yeah. I got a drum roll. Where is it? Ah. Uh, you. Rim shot. Ka-ching, rim rim shot. Where's the rim shot? Come on. I thought I. Oh, no, here we go. Drums roll. Drum roll. Drum roll. <laughs> the Alpha Dog special. Three hundred dollars off of what? Of your monthly SEO fee every month for forever, as long as you're with us, as long as you mention it before you sign up with us. This is right off your rate card. I mean, they're going to give you an additional three hundred dollar discount right off the rate card. I mean, my God, forever, because you know me. Unbelievable. A lifetime discount of $300 a month. As long as you do business with Search Lab Digital, just mention Jim Ziegler. And you're going to tell the people that answer the phone or people that answer the emails that this special exists, right? Yep. And they're not going to call up and say, oh, I never heard of anything about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know, and, and these are all U.S. based uh, people answering the phone, right? Oh, oh yeah, for sure. Yes, I don't understand you. No, okay. <laughs> I don't get it. You know, okay, fantastic, ladies and gentlemen. We have burned through an hour so fast. Um, anything we we need to tell the people, Jim Ziegler, Alpha Dog discount. I'm still reeling from that. Um, <laughs> Mark, are you, are you have you recovered? Anything you need to tell people? I mean, I don't know how we're going to afford the 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 paella in Portugal or whatever you eat there. I don't know. What they <laughs> eat. Uh, no, so this is this is great, and we love working with uh, with people we get from this show. I mean, these are usually people um, dealerships that are very intentional about learning. Um, they take this stuff very seriously. They're more we're, we're not like bringing them up to speed all the time in the early months of the campaigns. They're more knowledgeable. And so we love, love, love getting clients from this show. Uh, they stick with us for a long time. They, they've stuck with us. I don't think we've had a single person who started because of the show. We have signed up quite a few people from the show. And, you know, some of my clients get very little because they, they got, you know, what, whatever. Some, pe some people just explode with, with results from this show. And, you know, it's, it's advertising. You can't predict advertising. But I'm going to tell you what, you guys have had great results because the, the people see the people on the screen, they know that you've got integrity, uh, the, the integrity message. And that's what impressed me about you, Mark Beelan, is you've got the integrity that so many vendors lack. I mean, you, you, it's, it's genuine. Well, I, I, thank I, you I appreciate it. I thank you for that. And I mean, I, I always think these broadcasts are good because it's like, I'm, I'm back with a friend again. So I, I like, I like hanging out with you. The, I, I know I really thought we had like 20 more minutes. I didn't realize it was the time was, it was up. So fast, right? It, would, it zoomed by. And so, um, you know, it's, it's, it's always good to be with you, Jim. It just it, like, I think these shows work really well because we know you, we like you, you're legitimately a friend of ours sincerely. And, um, it's like, it's like coming back and, and, and catching up after a little while. Well, you know, you, I just met uh, Dane about a year ago, but when you talk about Greg Gifford, I've known him since his beard was brown. And another one, too. You've known me since my glasses were only single and not trifocal. Oh, my gosh. I, I certainly did. I mean, 
we, we've all aged a bit, you know. I, I I don't take my hat off early, but I do have a great Gifford haircut. <laughs> <laughs> okay, everybody wave goodbye to the audience. Thank you, Dane. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Greg.